The way to overcome the limitation in scale is to distribute the denial of service attack. That's where this concept of DDoS or distributed denial of service attacks come from. So consider for a moment if one attacker is attacking, that's that's a certain limitation of bandwidth. It's a, it's a limitation of path from the attacker to the target. But if you've got millions of attackers, millions of hosts, all sending out that same amount of traffic or even a scaled down version of traffic, it can be far more effective. If the traffic is coming from different parts of the world, from different types of hosts, from different internet service providers, across different segments of the internet backbone, that's an exceptionally hard attack to defend against for the target. The target doesn't know which traffic is legitimate and which traffic is an attack. It can't distinguish because the things it uses to distinguish typically are what's the source address, what does the packet look like, how much traffic am I getting from this one place at this one time. That all goes away with the distributed denial of service attack. And the easiest way to explain that is to illustrate it. Consider a hundred hackers, all of which are planted around the world or even around the country or even around the city where this target is. If they all start mounting an attack at the same time, that's a hundred sources, a hundred computers pumping out this attack traffic, a hundred different uh, things that the router in this case needs to defend against, identify and block in some way. If the hackers each hacker then infects potentially five or 10 or 20 different computers with malware, malware that is designed to add a certain command, attack this router as well, then it scales exponentially. You've got an enormous number of sources for this attack. Those sources, uh, once they're compromised, are typically known as zombies, zombie computers, because they really don't know what they're going after. They really don't know what they're doing. There's just a little bit of code that every once in a while wakes up and says, should I attack someone? And in this case, the hackers say, yes, at 3.42 p.m. on Thursday, go ahead and wake up and attack Big Money Bank's router with this kind of attack. Great. Then you've got that scaled out to hundreds or thousands or even millions of zombie computers, none of which has to work particularly hard because it scaled so well that this attack is going to be successful even with a little traffic from each zombie. Distributed denial of service attacks can be quite catastrophic. They can really shut down an enterprise. Uh, there's been numerous, numerous cases of even the biggest internet presence companies getting shut down for hours, even days in a lot of cases, because it's exceptionally hard to defend against a distributed denial of service attack. There's almost no way to shut it off. However, there are a lot of immediate reactions and long-term reactions to distributed denial of service attacks. And as ethical hackers, we should certainly know what to expect when we mount one of these attacks, what's going to be the impact. Oftentimes, the first thing that you can see as an, as an attacker is that the target has no plan to deal with this. They don't know what to do. They pick up the phone and they call the switch vendor or they call the firewall vendor or they have their internet service provider just simply shut down their ports, shut down their connectivity. Uh, they, they perform these kind of pseudo random activities which are not good for business and certainly illustrate and underline the necessity of having some kind of response plan. There's typically a, a financial loss when an active denial of service attack or distributed denial of service attack occurs. The perception of that company is probably going to go down in the market. If you can't get to your bank for a week, that probably means reporters, stock market brokers, and people like that are going to also not be able to get to their bank. And that's going to hit the wires. That's probably going to actually cause some kind of financial or possibly regulatory impact to that company. People certainly can't do their work. More and more people rely on the internet or some type of connectivity to do their work. So at the target environment, if they can't get out to do their work and people can't get in, well, then there's going to be a significant loss of productivity. And again, that scales up. If you find that your target for your ethical hacking only has one or two internet connections and you can shut those down for a week, what is going to be the impact 
on personnel? What's going to be the impact on, on customers, certainly, but also employees? And then longer term, certainly a degrading of the of the perception of the service or the or the client, because many people think if well, if they can't defend against a couple of Internet hackers somewhere in the world, how can they protect my valuable data or how can they protect my money or how can they protect my investments? That can be a problem for a company, especially one that doesn't have a plan, doesn't have some kind of PR engine in motion. And then as well. A lot of these companies that get impacted by distributed denial of service attacks tend to just start throwing money at security technologies. They need the coolest, newest router. They need the highest performance switch. They want to start offloading a bunch of stuff and distributing a bunch of stuff and buying very, very expensive gear. And I'm not saying that security technology investment is a bad thing. But it's a bad thing if it's done for the wrong reason or done as an as a knee jerk reaction to this type of attack. That type of investment needs to be carefully planned and carefully managed, or it's going to be worse for them and actually better for the ethical hacker because an unconfigured firewall or a poorly configured uh, internet service provider connection is probably better for us because it's easier to get back in, but leaves the illusion of security. The IT staff will probably think that that firewall is all they need to protect them, but they never bother to change any of the defaults. So we as ethical hackers know the password. We know how to shut it off. We know how to punch holes in it already.